Okay, yes, we're back with another Bronco review. Last time we putted around on some dusty trails in a four-door Outer Banks model. This time, we've got more adventurous trails and a more adventurous model in this 2021 Ford Bronco two-door Badlands. First off, let's talk looks. You know, I pretty much prefer the longer wheelbase four-door versions of anything out there, but I am ready to admit that this two-door version does look pretty great, especially with the rapid red paint and 33-inch KO2 tires. Since it's a Badland, it also gets a slew of underbody protection and the rock rails as standard kit. Also, internet, don't stress, these are just trail pinstripes, plus my daughter may have drawn in the dust a little bit too. In the cabin, it's a pretty nice place to spend your day on the road or off of it. A Badlands model is near the top of the rung. You get upgraded running gear, but you also get a pretty well-sorted interior. But you can always add more, and this one has some goodies, like the overhead aux switches, leather-trimmed vinyl seats, and a bit more thanks to the inclusion of Option Group 334A. That adds the wireless charging spot, a 360-degree camera, heated steering wheel, adaptive cruise, some rear power outlets, and bumps you from the 8-inch screen to the larger 12-inch screen. Oh, and it also includes the nicely sorted 10-speaker B&O sound system. Unlike that last Bronco we drove, though, this one has the smaller engine. That's a 2.3-liter inline turbocharged four-cylinder engine making 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel. But the good news here, unlike with the bigger engine, with this one, you can opt for the manual gearbox over the automatic. And that's what we've got here. It features seven forward gears. You have one through six, but then you also have a gear marked C, which stands for the crawler gear. You can use that when rock crawling. Or if you have to ride over the curb at your local Whole Foods parking lot, you know, show those other off-roaders who's king or queen of the local shopping center. But regardless of where you're driving it, here's the good news. It's gonna be a good experience. Minus that squeaking hard top. It's going to be a good experience because on road, it mops the floor with the Jeep Wrangler. This has very good on-road manners for an off-road capable vehicle. Off-road, it's excellent. It is as capable as any Wrangler. It's just really, really good, especially when you start using the more aggressive features of a vehicle like this one. This Badlands comes standard with a disconnecting front stabilizer bar. Just press a button, keep it under 20 miles an hour, and it'll stay disconnected. I just disconnected it there. It reminds you, if you go over, it automatically reconnects, and then it will disconnect again on its own back under 20 miles per hour. So it's almost like a set it and forget it. This does have the GOAT modes. If you put this into rock crawl mode, which makes you go into four low, and then you also engage the crawler gear, the crawling ability is amazing. It feels like you can go over anything. You can just walk this along whatever you need to get along, and it does it with ease, with comfortable ease. Put it back down to first to ease down this hill. The steering feel is good on and off road. The brakes feel great. This Badlands, which comes with 33 inch KO2s, it's excellently suited for the task at hand. It's funny to me that when you jump to the Sasquatch package, it jumps up to 35, but for some reason Ford jumps away from the KO2s and goes to Goodyear Wranglers. And then they have to go through the trouble of getting rid of the Wrangler naming on the tire because they don't want to associate it with the Jeep product. It seems like they could just go with larger KO2s. I'm curious about what the issue is there. Maybe the larger KO2s are a little bit too loud for them or something to that effect. The seats are supremely comfortable. There's good room in the two door in the back seat as well. There's good storage behind the back seats in the two door, which is impressive, which is if you compare it to when I reviewed the Defender 90 and it was laughably bad in terms of cargo space, this is light years better than that and it has more space than the Wrangler as well. I wish Ford got this top figured out a bit better before they brought it to market. I know they're working on fixes. It's squeaky as hell out here off-road, which I can forgive a little bit. Where I can't forgive it is on-road at highway speeds. It is just, it's too loud. It's way too loud. It needs more sound deadening or something to just quiet it way down. The turning radius is excellent, and there's even a function to help it turn tighter where it kind of drags the inside wheel, and I have found that I don't even need that in most instances. Because this has the upgraded large screen, 
and when I put it into one of the off-road modes, it automatically turns the forward camera on so you can see exactly what's going on. And that's great because it is a big 12-inch screen with a really nice display. So when you're driving slowly enough and you're putting tires in certain places and you want to see what's going on, you can easily see what's going on in front of this vehicle. This is a well thought out, well engineered, well built off-roader. And you know, I really do like Jeep Wranglers and Jeep Gladiators. They're, they're great vehicles at what they do, but they've been resting on their laurels for a bit now because there's been no true competition in that space at that price point for those vehicles. And now here, Ford with the Bronco, I don't know why you would pick a Wrangler over one of these with the exception of that it's just really difficult to get one of these right now. They're both gonna wind up in the same price bracket depending on which models you order. They both have a similar style, but the engines minus the 392 version and the hybrid version of the Wrangler, the engines are better on the Bronco. This base engine makes 300 horsepower. The larger 2.7 it, it rips and the 10 speed is very nicely suited to the task. The smaller engine here, almost like in the Bronco Sport where I expected to be vastly underwhelmed by the little three cylinder engine and I was pleasantly surprised. It's the same thing here. I'm more than ple pleasantly surprised though because still 300 horsepower, that's fantastic. This is a very, very good machine. I, I, I really, really like it a lot from the looks to the interior comfort, the sound system, the, I wish the, the, my biggest gripes are the price, the top, and then one more gripe on the interior is that since this is the manual, you wanna see the rev counter, and it's just this little bar with a little number, and you can see it, but you really have to look down at it to see where you're at in the rev range. I would prefer a rev counter, an analog rev counter, and then a digital speedo instead of the way it is set up here. Those are my two big gripes. You can't see the rev counter, this top is not good, and then it's expensive. And speaking of price, as you might expect, all of this goodness doesn't come cheaply. A base two door starts around $30,000, which is a respectable starting point. This one here, the base price is nearly 44,000. As tested, it's $51,760, and it is not the most expensive way to equip a Bronco. I won't count the first edition because they're sold out. So take a four door wild track, add all the options you can and stare down an asking price before any dumb dealer markups of $63,350. And that's before the Bronco Raptor arrives too. But you don't need to spend that much. You can get a great Bronco in the forty dollars to $50,000 range and they're good on or off-road. They look good on the trail or just sitting outside your local coffee shop and they offer the Wrangler some real deal competition. The Bronco is truly back and it is here to kick some butt. Assuming you can find one at MSRP. Good luck with that.